by a composer named Eric Satie. It's a gymnopédie, uh, and it's uh, played a lot, but it has a certain beautiful, stately, yet somber feel to it as we approach these, uh, these holy days. So... This is the E minor prelude of Friedrich Chopin.
From our kitchen table to yours, welcome to worship this Monday, Thursday. Cynthia, thank you for calling our attention to the work of this day, a work of a new mandate as given by Jesus. Now more than ever, we know and we remember that a church is not a building, nor is it a steeple. The church is indeed each of you. As we gather today at these tables of grace, these common tables in our own homes, we look to a time when God will gather us all to one great table where Christ is the host. The words of the 116th Psalm are appointed for this Maundy Thursday. Hear these words. I love the Lord because God has heard my voice and my supplications. Because God has inclined his ear to me, therefore I have called on him as long as I live. What should I return to the Lord for all of her bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will call on the name of our God. I will pray my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of God's faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O oh Jerusalem. Let us praise the Lord. Friends, welcome to worship. Make sure that you have your chat screen open somewhere on your screen as the liturgy will be posted there. Let us worship our God. Please join me printed in your bulletins or pasted in the chat screen for a unison prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of self-judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we may be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie Friends, as we confess our sins before God and as we ask for forgiveness, we are reminded immediately that we are a forgiven people. We live in our bones, in our bodies as forgiven before we even utter our words of confession. So I invite you to breathe into the forgiveness that is in this moment. We share this forgiveness with one another by passing the peace. So I invite you to give a wave or a hello through your video screens and also to type a greeting of peace into the chat screen. We share with one another saying, the peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Our scripture lesson this afternoon is found in John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17, and 31b to 35. Now, before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, 
to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For if I have set you an example, then you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify he, himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children... I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. But this everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love, for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Those sirens, um, the, the, we got a response from my dogs here, and this is some of what we are learning. Welcome. On another day, from another gospel, before the story that we just heard today, Jesus was on yet another procession. It's been a week of a lot of processions. This other day, he walked into town, and there he met a guy named Zacchaeus, who was a very rich man. And Zacchaeus was very interested in meeting Jesus, and all the people that were more faithful than Zacchaeus wanted to meet Jesus more, and they tried to keep Zacchaeus away. Zacchaeus, who was a, a short man, scripture tells us, we don't get a lot of descriptions of physical attributes, but we know that Zacchaeus is a shorter man climbs a tree to get a better view of Jesus as he's walking into town. And Jesus spots him. And Jesus says, Zacchaeus, get down. I'm coming to your house today for lunch. This is what Jesus has said to all of us today as Jesus has come to our houses for lunch. Our sanctuaries, our homes become the sanctuaries where we worship right now. This time, this 12 o'clock time every day is a bit of a sanctuary for Patrick and me. You'll forgive us if we actually eat. This is lunchtime for us. Um, we eat from 12 to 12.30. It's blocked out in both of our calendars. And it's a bit of time in the midst of some of us working what feels to be more, longer, and harder than we were when we were in our offices while in our own homes. So this time, as it is, I know, for many of you, a time where we can sit as family and catch up on what shenanigans have happened so far today and what waits for us on the other side. But this is a sacred time. And it's a sacred time that we get to share with 
all of us today what a blessing that is for this day where we remember a new commandment. A new commandment that is about grace. A commandment that says, I will be with you. A commandment that says, love one another. Love one another. The simplest words of grace from our friend, our teacher, our savior, who gathers at other people's tables time and time again in scripture, for he is always the guest, knowing that in a day still to come, he is always the host. For Jesus will gather us all around one table again, one eternal table where the saints and sinners of every age will gather and sing hymns and songs and tell stories and say words of grace. Words of grace. These are fancy things when we are in church. They can feel high, they can feel lofty, they can feel like we don't know how to pray, we have to let others pray for us. But around kitchen tables, they needn't be so fussy. They are common words, common words that many of us might have been our first prayers that we learned. What were the prayers before a meal that you learned as a child? You say grace before eating now as a, what do you say when you give thanks? There are so many familiar patterns that when we are together again, we'll share them. But if you want, as we prepare to eat our meal together, our communal meal, I invite you to type those words of grace, that earliest Thanksgiving for what we are about to eat into the chat window. Some of them are serious and some of them are, uh, well, a little uh, more funny. Um, they all work for they all invoke grace. So there we are, Nora. Thank you for beginning with what I knew would be coming. Rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for this grub. And for everyone who learned how to pray while sitting at tables. It is as another church historian named John McGuckin, who is a professor of early church, medieval church, likes to say, who teaches the theology? It's the grandmothers. It's always the grandmothers sitting around kitchen tables that speak words of grace. And so today, as we sit around our individual tables with the people that are closest to us, perhaps closest to our hearts, and also closest to us in proximity, quarantined in these days, remembering a new commandment, a new mandate, we share these words of grace. And I hope that each of you have with you a piece of bread or a cracker. It can be a cookie if you've already eaten lunch and a cup of something, iced tea, juice, wine, whatever is both safe and festive for you. If you don't have it, take just a moment and gather that, bring it into screen. We are going to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper together as Christ's commandment and separately as our health and safety mandates. Let us gather ourselves in the spirit of reverie for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, where we remember that the Lord said to Moses, this day shall be a remembrance for you and you shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. And Paul says to the church, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. The communion we celebrate today takes place around common tables. The ones we share with the people we love most, the ones resonant with the words of grace, the ones that nourish us night and day. Around these tables sit friends and seekers, people who wish to follow Jesus and to know the ways of God. We join our tables together not because we must, but because we may. We gather not because we are fulfilled, but because we are hungry for mercy. We come to pray. If this is what you have done today, then know that it is enough. Come, gather the elements of your own home, of pieces of bread or a bagel, of a cracker or even a cookie, and a cup of juice or wine or tea or even living water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. We praise you along with the saints and the sinners of all ages who forever sing to the glory of your name. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ who has shown us the way even unto death. We join our voices together, praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sitting around our own tables on this day of Passover, we remember the story of how on a night not long after he'd been anointed by Mary, the same night on which he was betrayed by one friend and denied by another, Jesus gave new meaning to these ancient symbols. We remember that on that night, he gathered his disciples, men and women together, to celebrate the feast of Passover. And on that night, he took bread. And after giving thanks for the bread, he broke it. And he gave it to all of them, to his friends. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup and he offered it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of grain and vine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion and the love of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ that we may be one in ministry, united in our call to love and serve one another. People of God, these tables are set and all is ready. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our Savior. Go ahead, break your bread. This is the bread of life. And this this is the cup of salvation. Our supper is over. Let our communion never end. Please join me in the prayer of Thanksgiving that's found in the chat window. Oh God, by coming to your table, we receive more than we deserve. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, through whom we receive life abundant, and in whom we are bound in covenant with all people. Renew us so that we may serve others as Christ served us. Amen. Amen. These are strange times and an ancient rite. Communion is real and true. It is in your hearts and it is what we gather to do today. Following this service, for the rest of this Maundy Thursday, for the beginning of these three final days that take us from tonight's supper to tomorrow's cross, to Sunday's empty tomb, be gentle with yourselves. You are living in holy days. 
holy days that have a new commandment to love one another. Our story continues tomorrow at 12 o'clock when we hear from our elders and deacons and from members of the choir offering gifts of reflection and music. And then on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., when we imagine the trumpets and listen for the sound of resurrection that comes as sure as it always does. This evening, we are not a people of foot washing in general ways. We read this scripture of John and we think, oh, that's nice, but we'll stick with communion. We don't need to be washing feet in church. But in the privacy of your own homes tonight, I want you to spend a moment with yourself or with those that are there with you and think of how you might serve one another, be gentle with one another, love one another, and humble yourselves for one another. Foot washing is an ancient symbol of self-care and of care for the ones that we love most. If you want to wash feet, you don't have to tell anyone. If you want to do something else, give someone a back rub. Rub your own feet. Take a hot bath. Do something that lets you settle in and the God that is made known in Jesus, our friend, our Savior, our God. Our postlude today is the medley on the old familiar tune, The Old Rugged Cross by Dale Wood. Go with peace and know that you are created in the name of the one who creates all, world without end. Amen. <laughs>